Hi, Kaveri. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Yeah. Can you tell me something about yourself? Yes, sir. I'm Kaveri. I'm from Hyderabad. I completed my graduation in the year 2017. Mm -hmm. Currently, I'm working for a non IT company. I wanted to shift my career into IT, so I've learned some testing. Okay. Okay, great. So, uh, is uh, so you wanted to shift to software testing career? So, you, right. So, why do you want to change your career to software testing? Any specific reason behind that? Like due to Corona, hmm. my company was shut a few months, hmm. so I was not able to find any job. So, I stopped it in June. So, I wanted to shift, and as I am interested in IT also. Mm -hmm. okay okay fine great so can you tell me something uh, what is what is the difference between severity and priority severity coming to severity it means uh, it's like uh, urgency mm -hmm. okay impact how impact is the effect on the business overflow mm -hmm. severity and coming to priority, uh, how soon we can fix the problem? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you give me an example of a defect with uh, low severity but high priority? Low severity. Email, email ID mm -hmm. uh, in a login page where email is not corrected. Uh, I mean, not correctly placed. Mm -hmm. uh, but while coming to the, uh, like, when it comes to the public, mm -hmm. uh, there the company name and logo should be clear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, so, low severity and high priority. Right? Yes. Yeah. So you are telling the company logo as a defect. Mm -hmm. Hello. For low severity, high priority. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Company logo is a fine. Uh, this is a good answer. So let me share my screen. So is my screen visible? Hello, Kaveri, is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Yahoo, Yahoo. Right. Now you need to write the test scenarios. Tell me the high level test scenarios. How will you test this? Uh, first, uh, first test scenario is like to create an account. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is first scenario I'll be taking as to create an account. Mm -hmm. mm, then second scenario is with uh, logging in with um, valid credentials, valid mm -hmm. inputs. Mm -hmm. mm. Next uh, third will be the forgotten password. Forgotten username, uh, right? Uh, yeah, forgotten username. Mm -hmm. Or else uh, I'll go with the continue with Google. Mm -hmm. Okay. For test scenarios. Right, right. Which are the other test scenarios? Stay signed mm -hmm. by applying invalid inputs. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So uh, I'll tell you a few of the positive test scenarios first and then the negative test scenarios. In an interview, when you get any of these questions no, in which they are asking about test scenarios, so you need to tell first about the positive flow and then you can cover about the negative flow. Okay. So over here, see, uh, you can try with a valid username, valid email address and valid mobile number. So these are three test scenarios. Again, in 
in username and in email address, you will get the options like whether those username or email address are valid or not. If someone would have already created an account, then it won't allow you to go proceed further, right? Then mobile number also you can try. Then in mobile number, you can try with a valid 10 digit mobile number and then you can also try with an invalid mobile number. Okay. Then let's say you have signed in and if you select this option checked as stay signed in. So the moment you come to this website again, so it should not, yeah, it should not provide you this particular screen of entering your credentials. It, it should directly move you, proceed you, take you into this website itself. Okay. Then forgotten username means if you would have forgotten uh, your username, so then you should get some list of security question answers. Again, if you provide improper answers to those security questions that you have set them earlier, so it should not allow you to log in or, uh, you know, receive, retrieve your username. Right. Then continue with Google. This already you gave. Right. Now, let's say if I open this browser, in incognito mode okay and if i enter the username or email address or a mobile number valid username okay valid inputs i give and i choose stay signed in okay now i have logged in into the incognito mode of the google chrome browser now i close that particular window and i relaunch the browser and if i open this website Will you be directly logged in into the website, yahoo.com website, no. or what would happen? Uh, no, sir. Mm -hmm. It will take us to this uh, sign in page only. Correct, correct. Why so? Uh, because there the security features are different. Correct, correct. That because that is an incognito mode browser. Okay. Yes. So, so in an interview, people might confuse you by, you know, uh, giving you scenario type of uh, questions like this so you need to stay focused to the scenario and think and then you can answer it, right so this is good okay now let's let's come to another scenario Okay. Now, is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, can you tell me the test scenarios? First, the positive one and the negative one for this screen. Only for this login page, sir. Uh -huh. Login page and then you have got these three options over here, okay. right? Uh, okay. And you have got these links over here. Okay. So, firstly, I will check the login with the positive inputs. Mm -hmm. like email id positive email id and correct password then i'll try to log in if both are correct then i'll be taken to the next page mm -hmm. account mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. then if i don't have this login id mm -hmm. then to the debit card while well, using debit card also we can log in mm -hmm. i have debit card I, with the pay, uh, card number and pin by providing this capture I log in. Okay. Uh, then M pin. Mm -hmm. Coming to M pin, either I'll be having the customer ID while, while providing the customer ID and M pin. These are the positive cases, sir. With mm -hmm. the number also. Okay, fine. Now, what would be your test data with respect to, uh, let's say, this debit card number is there? Okay. Yes, so what yes. would be your test data with respect the card to yeah. The card number is usually a numeric, sir, which is mm -hmm. around the 16 digit number. Mm -hmm. So I'll be providing that. Okay. So what would be uh, the test data with respect to equivalence partitioning and with respect to boundary value analysis? Uh, uh, card number coming to card number sir yes yes hello 
Yes, yes. Yes, Kaveri, with respect to card number. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I'll go with boundary, sir, range. Okay. So, can you, can you tell me the test data with respect to boundary value analysis? Uh, like, I'll be checking with, um, like, it is for 16 digits. Let us suppose card number digit is 16 numbers. Mm -hmm. So, I'll be with 16 plus 1. 16 minus 1. Mm -hmm. Okay. Minimum. Okay. 16 plus 1 would be going into the negative testing. 16 minus 1 is also a part of negative testing. 16 with respect to boundary when you will test. So that is fine. Okay. And what about with, let's say, with respect to equivalence partitioning, now you have to decide the test data. So what would be your test data? Uh, so I'll be selecting the, uh, I'll divide into partitions, sir, the complete box into some partitions, mm -hmm. then the, mostly I'll take the middle values mm -hmm. to check the data. Okay. Okay. Now let's say this is the website that you were testing. Okay. You went for a coffee. You came after 20 minutes. What should happen to this website? Would, should you be allowed to proceed or continue with the operations or transactions that you were doing or what would happen? No, sir. No, it should not allow. Mm -hmm. Why? It, it should get locked out due to security features mm -hmm. applied here. Because mm -hmm. any, any transaction page should be there till 15 to 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, beyond that, if it is apply allowing you to log in or it will is in the same state, then it is a bug for us. Okay. So session expiry should be defined. Session should get expired, right? Yes. Sir. You should no longer be able to proceed with the operations or transitions after certain amount of or certain time limit or certain duration. This is the yeah. This is the test scenario, and this is a good answer. That you are clear about the you know session expiry thing, okay. Now consider a situation where you are not getting locked out, even after twenty minutes, twenty five minutes, or even after ten minutes, you are able to proceed with those kind of transactions or proceed with the operations. So what would be the severity of this defect? Very high severity, sir. High severity and priority. Priority would be high. Both are high. Both are high. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Now consider a situation where this CAPTCHA code is case sensitive. This line you can read over here, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, if there is a spelling mistake in the word sensitive over here, okay. So what would be the severity and what would be the priority of this defect? Severity would be high, sir, but priority we can do in the next bills, low priority. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you think uh, severity will be low, but priority will be high over here? Yeah, I think you gave a vice versa answer. You told severity high, priority low. Right? Yes, so, sir. Yeah. Would it not be a low severity bug and high priority bug? I'm just yes, asking. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Just, just a moment, sir. Yeah, yeah, you just can think. Moment. You can think and then you can uh, answer. You can take your time for thinking. Right. thinking. Business impact. No, business impact. no, sir. High priority and low severity. Correct, correct. It's a high priority bug because it is coming on the login screen. It is going to yes. get displayed to every user. But the severity will be low because you are going to, you would be able to enter your captcha or do those kind of functionality is not getting impacted over here. Yes. Okay. Now consider a scenario where if I click on this use virtual keypad option. Okay. Okay. This, this keypad is not coming up. So what would be the severity and what would be the priority of this? Defect? Severity and priority. Mm -hmm. This is not. Both will be high, sir. 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it would be a high severity, high priority effect because this feature would be used by, I think, most of the users do often use it. Yes. Right? Okay. Stop sharing the screen. Okay. What is exploratory testing? Exploratory testing. Exploring application without looking into the documents. Exp Hello? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, Kaveri. Please go ahead. Yeah. Exploratory testing is something that we explore the application by our own knowledge mm -hmm. based on the experience. The, these exploratory comes under two, two scenarios when the documents are not clear mm -hmm. or if documents which doesn't provide the clear information about the product. Mm -hmm. So then exploratory testing. Correct, correct. So basically, uh, when a tester has uh, domain knowledge, I would say, and testing experience to predict where and under what conditions the system might behave unexpectedly. So at that time, we are going for exploratory testing. Okay. Now, what is acceptance testing? Uh, acceptance, user acceptance testing. Mm -hmm. So after doing all the testing, that is end-to-end -end testing, high-end testing, then the application is given to the user to, to check the functionalities. Uh, that is called user acceptance testing. Okay. So what is the difference between alpha testing and beta testing? Uh, alpha testing is done at the development environment mm -hmm. by the domain experts or the client, while the testing comes into the client's environment. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Correct. Correct. What is accessibility testing? Accessibility. Hmm. How uh, how friendly uh, uh, how friendly a user can access the product or. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, accessibility testing is actually, you know, uh, it is used to verify whether the software or the product that has been developed, it has been accessible to the people having disabilities. Okay. Yeah. Now, what do you know about Agile? Agile. Mm -hmm. Agile, it is a process uh, where, where it is used for big size of projects. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, in, in Agile, uh, the whole product is divided into modules. Mm -hmm. uh, module by module, the software gets developed. Uh, so what is the difference between Agile and Waterfall? Uh, in, uh, in coming to Waterfall model, mm -hmm. the requirement changes at any stage is not possible. Mm -hmm. Coming to Agile, requirement changes can be done at any stage of the development. Um, in Waterfall model, once the requirements are clear, only validation can be done, no verification in Waterfall model. model. And in Agile model, verification and validation both uh, parallelly. Okay. What else? What what is the basic difference between two? Um, in agile process, we can give the product to the customer within weeks. Uh, communication with the client will be from the day one. Mm -hmm. Where whereas in waterfall model, it is not possible. Uh, it is exhaustive. Mm -hmm. Waterfall model is exhaustive. Uh, Agile, Agile can be implemented in days. Okay. Right. What else? That's all I mm -hmm. Okay, fine. So, um, so whenever you get this difference between Agile and Waterfall, so you can tell all these differences, right? See, first of all is uh, Agile is quite a flexible method, right? 
and it allows as you were mentioning it allows changes within the project development requirements right while in the waterfall model there is no scope of changing the requirements once the project development starts so that is the main basic difference between agile and waterfall okay in agile the test plan is reviewed after each sprint okay while in waterfall the test plan is rarely uh, you know it is rarely discussed during the test phase now what is sprint actually i was just mentioning in one of, in this answer what is sprint it is the duration of the time taken to complete the um, user stories duration of the time taken to time taken to complete the user stories not only user stories but you can also consider that uh, any task any specific okay. task or any uh, any deliverables that are to be done so generally a sprint is actually a short period of time wherein a development team or the team makes a commitment to complete some specific task let it be an enhancement or user story or you know sometimes it might be related to defect fixing as well that in this particular sprint we would be fixing these and these defects let's say 25 defects in the sprint okay so that is also possible okay but why is it called sprint why do we call sprint in agile no idea sir okay okay fine so let this be an open question for the viewers who are watching this video why do we say sprint in agile right what is the significance of that term sprint in agile why is it called sprint in agile okay so let it be a open question for them okay now what is the difference between regression testing and retesting uh, retesting is the testing which is done on the modified build uh, when and it it where we check that the modified uh, uh, retesting uh, please please don't be nervous you can take water if you want right yeah uh, meera has uh, point meera can you give me 5 minutes please and then you can join yeah retesting is testing the modified build and to check whether the reported bugs are rectified or not mm. and coming to the regression testing uh, uh, testing the modified build and to check if there are any side effects uh, due to code changes is called regression testing okay side effects due to code changes. yeah that's fine that is regression testing okay which are the different types of performance testing performance testing load testing stress testing volume testing mm -hmm. okay what is the difference between load and stress testing load testing uh, load testing means uh, we are testing the application with limited number of users mm -hmm. like uh, for face um, let us assume the facebook page uh, where uh, for certain amount of time uh, it will be of 1000 1000 members so below 1000 or up to 1000 we will check the load performance load testing uh, test testing means applying the load uh, unlimitedly okay okay so when, when you get this question in an interview you can also tell like load testing is testing the application or the software within the specified limit let's say if you have to test for 1000 users so you will be testing till 1000 you might go in the range of increasing your users maybe 200 400 and up to 1000 like that while stress testing is testing the application or software beyond the specified limit okay beyond 1000 right so that is the answer Okay. So, uh, Kaveri, I'm done with the interview. Do you have any questions for me? No, sir. But uh, will I get the job? Like, am I good at the subject? 
yeah definitely see why will you not get the job see i don't see there is any specific problem uh, in you not able to clear the real time interview but there is a slight improvement needed is uh, you need to answer with more confidence okay you are having a good knowledge of the such subjects you are having a clarity of the concepts like priority severity when will you call any defect or uh, no any bug as a low severe or high prior high severe low prior so you are having that clarity but now you need to be confident okay your confidence will you know easily clear out 40 to 50% of your i mean it will give a positive impression on the interview if you are confident okay then you can go through some of these concepts of agile what is sprint what is iteration what are the principles of agile what is the difference between agile what of okay what is uh, what is scrum okay. so these are all the things that are also used uh, in the company in day to day work apart from testing right so have a knowledge about those things as well okay and definitely you will get a job and when they will ask you how why do you want to switch from non it background to testing it right that was the start of the interview you told that you are from a non it background right due to the covid situation that is a valid reason the covid situation was is an alarming one so you had to switch now you have to switch now career from some non it field to testing but then you can also add one thing in your answer you are passionate about testing you are fond of testing you like you know testing so much that uh, maybe you can tell about installing various applications from the play store and see how the softwares are being developed you are curious about knowing the applications or the softwares in detail that's what brings you the passion in you and you want to make your career in testing right so these are few of the things that few of the points if you can you know change or mold your answer in this way so it would you know definitely give a good i mean leave a good impression on the interview right and be confident in whichever company you are giving the interview that is not going to be the last company there are lakhs of companies in this world right so don't ever think that whether will you will get the job or not be positive and be confident okay okay then kaveri for another interviews are also lined up so thank you so okay. much and all the best for your career thank you sir. thank you